Hey everybody, what's going on? Welcome to Guns N' Roses Central. And with Guns N' Roses about to play Denver as their third show on this U.S. leg of the Not In This Lifetime tour, I want to take a look back at a show they'd previously done in Denver or two shows they'd previously done in Denver and talk about how Axel almost caused a riot at the 92 show he played with Metallica and how supposedly there's a story flowing around that somebody put a gun to Axel's head at the 92 show in Denver. So let's talk a bit about the first Denver show. So in 1991, before the Use Your Illusion albums came out, Guns N' Roses did something a lot of bands didn't really do. They went on the road even before the albums actually came out. So they had played Denver on July 11th, 1991, and they played at the uh, McNichols Sports Arena. And this was a really interesting concert because unlike a lot of concerts where they opened up with Perfect Crime during 1991 before the albums came out, they opened up the concert with You Could Be Mine. Second song was Brownstone. And then they played a lot of illusion stuff. You know, a lot of the material they were playing, fans who had attended the concert hadn't heard before, like You Could Be Mine. They played Bad Obsession, Perfect Crime, Live and Let Die, Dust and Bones. Uh, they played Civil War, November Rain, Double Talk and Jive, 14 Years. And, you know, Knocking on Heaven's Door, Estranged, Pretty Tied Up. And, you know, a lot of the, about half the set list is, Appetite stuff and, you know, um, gun, uh, GNR Live stuff. And then the rest of the set list was a lot of illusion stuff. And this song, they actually played, this concert, they actually played Used to Love Her as well, which they didn't, I don't think they played a whole lot of on the Use Your Illusion tour until 1993 when they had the Skin and Bones tour. Now, this uh, concert is also notable because Axel told the whole story behind the West Arkeen uh, song Bad Obsession. And Axel temporarily stopped Dustin Bones to kick out a fan who gives him the finger. So here's the actual audio from the actual concert. Stop! Stop the show! Stop! This guy! This guy right here! No, no, you punk. You're out. You're out of here. You're out. This guy right here. No, no, forward one, that guy. Later, homeboy, you wasted your fucking money. I'll tell you what that's about. See, we got a, a video crew, and before the show, you know, they're filming the crowd, seeing what's up. Out of the whole fucking crowd, this guy just keeps going, fuck you, come on, punk. And he's on tape, you know? So now, I see him going, fuck you, come here, you know, trying to get me to dive in and fuck up the show for everybody else to pay their money. That's like what happened in St. Louis. In St. Louis, we got four guys that happen to be friends of the building security, you know, and they don't give a fine fuck what these guys do. This guy thought he was smart. He's out. Now we're gonna have a good time. Let's pick it up for the world. The rest of the concert went off without a hitch, and the review from the Rocky Mountain News actually said that the band began the Colorado concert at 10 p.m., about an hour after Skid Row's 50-minute frantic, cliche-ridden set. They said when Rose stops yapping and sings and when Slash cuts loose with virtuoso guitar work, it's clear that the hype aside, Guns N' Roses is a top-flight working band. So fast forward now to 1992, Guns N' Roses are touring with Metallica, doing a co-headlining stadium tour. And Denver is one of the stops that Guns will be playing. Now, originally, Denver was supposed to be played on August 12, 1992. It was the second show after the infamous Montreal riot. But due to Axel's vocal problems and James Heffield being injured, they actually had to postpone the concert. And it was postponed from August 12th to September 18th, 1992. Guns' second appearance in Denver on the Use Your Illusion Tour would not be as memorable as the first one in terms of their performance. In fact, Guns N' Roses were pretty cr heavily criticized for their performance at their Denver show in 1992. So during the early part of the concert, something happens to Axel during Welcome to the Jungle, and Axel walks off stage, so the band is forced to play a few songs without him after that. Now, according to a local radio station in Denver, Axel almost caused a riot that night, so Guns were playing with Metallica and Body Count, so according to the article, after a rousing opening set from Body Count, Metallica came out and proved their status amongst the greatest bands of the era. 
even Hetfield wearing bandages on his arms and unable to play guitar, they delivered a powerful two-hour set as the crowd roared in on in approval. So Guns N' Roses supposedly came on after a 45-minute intermission between the bands, and halfway through their first song, Welcome to the Jungle, Axel threw his microphone down and stormed off the stage. Struggling to fill time, Slash led the rest of the band through an extended jam session, and the crowd began to grow restless, and as minutes passed, they started to boo. Finally, over 30 minutes later, Axl Rose re-emerged and immediately scolded the audience yelling shut the F up, which would be received with an even bigger chorus of boos. Through the remainder of the show, Rose complained several times about the sound, the security, and his road crew. And by the time they finally finished their uninspired set, more than half of the crowd had already left. It was an easy silence, especially in comparison to Metallica, who whipped an entire stadium into a frenzy only two hours earlier. Even diehard GNR fans, myself included, admitted that the band had, was outclassed by their opening acts. Then, the following Monday, legendary Denver concert promoter Barry Faye called a local radio station to deliver his account of the evening. So, according to Faye, Axl Rose was already headed back to the hotel room after leaving the stage during the first song. Fearful that the disgruntled fans would start a riot similar to what happened previously in Montreal and St. Louis, Faye instructed the limo driver to bring Rose back to the venue. When Rose arrived, Faye met him in the parking lot and threatened to file a lawsuit if he didn't get back on stage and finish the show. So according to some accounts, including Lars Ulrich, Faye pulled out a loaded handgun during the negotiations. Now, we'll probably never know what exactly happened that night in the parking lot of the old Mile High Stadium, but somehow Faye convinced Axel that the show must go on. Now, legendary concert promoter Barry Faye's done interviews over the years where he's been asked about the Axl Rose incident. So he did an interview with the uh, Phoenix New Times. He was asked, you had to debunk the story that Lars Ulrich had proliferated for years about you holding a gun to Axl Rose's head. So the story about the gun to Axl Rose's head came from Lars Ulrich. And here's what uh, Faye had to say. He said, oh my God, are you packing today, Barry? There are two versions. Lars has a lot of credibility and he gets to speak to more people than I do, but my version is true. A very interesting thing happened recently. A guy asked me last week at a book signing, would you have shot him, referring to Axl Rose? Would you have used the gun? And I had to really think. The answer was yes, because I'm not going to let Axl Rose treat people that way. I wouldn't have killed him, but I would have winged him or something like that he could still play. And he'd know damn well that I was serious, but I had to think about it. In another interview he did with the same publication, he was asked, what's your favorite story? And he said the Axl Rose story as told by Lars Ulrich. You've heard about that one, right? The story is, I guess the most famous of the stories, we had guns in Metallica at Mile High. There was about 48,000 people there. It was a big tour and they alternated closing. Uh, one night, one band would close and the other night, the other one. Now, I don't know if that one's true because I always thought Guns was the one who always played last. This one, Metallica opened and the whole story in the book, but I'll tell you, Metallica, Metallica opened and I went out. It was a great set. I went backstage for the opening number of Guns. I went out and they played Welcome to the Jungle. I'm walking out. I'm going to give you the language and you clean it up however you want. I'm just telling you how it happened. I'm walking backstage and the guy comes running out and says, Barry, Axel just left. I said, what the F are you talking about? Axel left. So I ran backstage and I found out that he had come down off stage, got into the limousine and left the site. So I said to, I went up to his name, it was Big John. He was the guy who ran the limo company and I said, you don't work for him, you work for me. I said, you ever want to see another F and dime with this company's money, you get the car back here. And he said, what? He said, yeah, the only way that he gets out of the car is if he jumps out. And if he jumps out, you leave him in the street, but you get the car back here. So he gets on his little cell phone. People are getting a little pissed by this time. Guns is up there jamming, right? They play Welcome to the Jungle, and then they didn't do anything. They were just jamming, and people were getting a little pissed off. In fact, I found out that they were taking their Guns N' Roses t-shirts back to the concession stand and throwing them and saying, give me a Metallica shirt. So I went to into the Guns N' Roses and Metallica's dressing room. So Guns send down an emissary, and this I know for sure because I was standing there within three feet, and he tells Lars, would you guys be consider coming up back up and jamming with us because the crowd's going to get out of line? So Lars tells him word for word, you bozos don't have enough money in your collective bank accounts for me to get back on that stage. So at that point, I left the dressing room, went back out to the parking lot, and got my 357 out of my glove box and put it in my back pocket. So I get out there, and I don't know what I'm going to do because, you know, he had caused a riot in Montreal. I believe by leaving and not coming back. Well, a few minutes later, the car comes back, and Axel gets out and talks to his manager. His name was Doug Goldstein. He was a glorified security guard. He used to do their security, and he took over their management. But how do you manage a manic depressive heroin addicts? That's a pretty good trick. I don't know how you do that. 
So Axel comes and talks to his manager and goes right up to the stage and he gets back into it. So I put three of my, what do you call them, security goons, thugs, the toughest ones I have at the top of the stairs and three Denver cops at the bottom. My instructions are the only way he gets out is if he, the only way he gets out if he leaves again is that way. And I point to the crowd. Goldstein says, Barry, you can't do that. Axel gets so pissed. I said, I don't give an F about him and I don't give the same about you. I care about them and I pointed to the people. So that basically is what happened. But Lars tends to tell a different story and Lars has far more credibility out in the industry than I have. He swears I put the gun up to Axel's temple and said, get on that effing stage or you're going to die. It, that 357 never left my pocket, but every time he sees me today, he says, Barry, are you packing today? So that was the story. So that does it for this episode of Guns N' Roses True Story. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know what your thoughts are. Did you guys go to the Denver show in 1992? And are you guys going to the Denver show in 2017? Comment down below and let me know. And as always, guys, make sure you hit the like button if you enjoyed the contents of this video. And be sure to subscribe if you love Guns N' Roses and want to see more videos just like this. And you guys can also go follow me on Facebook and Twitter. And you can also support me on Patreon as well. The links to all my channels are down below in the description box. Have a good one.